96.7 FM WORX. Good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. Talking this morning, Southwestern Boys Basketball. Our old friend, Coach Jerry Baumhold in. Good morning, Coach. Morning, Tim. How's life? Uh, fantastic. Oh, uh, it's good. Before we get too far along. Oh, here we go. Uh, no, I'm, I just I want to tell you and okay. Travis how much... Uh, We've appreciated the, the publicity you guys have given us and the coverage. Uh, sometimes that's difficult. And mm-hmm. Kids don't always understand. Communities, they don't always understand all the, the schools you got to cover sure. and all the things you guys got to do. And for this particular group of kids, as, as hard as they've worked and uh, as good as they have become, uh, you guys have done a wonderful job of uh, giving us what we think is some uh, – publicity that's due to these kids and uh, you just need to be told you we appreciate that well I appreciate that coach uh, again uh, trying to, to uh, highlight high school sports is what we focus on here and of course uh, high school basketball season we love being in the gymnasium of course uh, watching uh, great teams play and got a good team coach you're five and0 oh, had a new win at New Washington last night let's let's kind of go back and I always like to reflect on a season ago um, had a nice season a year ago. Ended up with, uh, what, 24 wins, just three losses? Kind of reflect back a little bit. Well, I, I think it was uh, everybody was a little skeptical at first. We really weren't sure with some of the young kids uh, how developed we were going to be early. And uh, and then uh, in the first seven, eight, nine games, uh, we got a pretty good taste of uh, – uh, what our strengths were, what our weaknesses were. Uh, you know, Henryville took it to us pretty good in the JCIT, and we learned then that, you know, we needed to, to do a couple things and to, to make us a better team. And yet we struggled. We struggled uh, with uh, some development of depth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not having that depth a year ago, we felt like cost us in the, in the regional. So uh, one of the things we've committed to and these kids have committed to as in the summer is not only improving their own skill sets and and becoming better basketball players but uh, just looking at what what is it we need to really look at being uh, a factor in the tournament and advancing in the tournament and one of the big things that just kept coming up over and over and over again is we got to develop some depth mm-hmm. and so all these kids have sacrificed some uh, some playing time against certain uh, teams to, so that we could develop that and so you know we feel like we're seven or eight deep now uh seven for sure mm-hmm. working on an eighth one and somewhere down the line when you're playing two games in one day whether that be in the north decatur tournament or uh, the regional or whatever the case is that we hope we get an opportunity to do uh th- that's going to pay off for us so uh but a year ago, it was pretty obvious that we were a pretty good team as long as we keep our five on the mm-hmm. floor. But if we had to go any deeper in that, uh, it gave us some issues. So uh, they committed to that. And, you know, when you reflect back last year, you say a pretty good season, 24-3, and three, you know, it's a school record for wins. Sure. Uh, the two of the three games we lost were by, uh, you know, uh, one possession. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, easily could have been 26-1. Uh, and one and uh, but uh, they have their goals set a lot higher this year. Uh, up to this point, we've played some really different kind of basketball teams that have shown us different things. Last night was the first time uh, somebody against us has really tried to hold it and spread us out a little bit this year. So, and I thought our kids did a fantastic job of responding. Uh, we got after them pretty good. And then uh, I said at the beginning of the year, by January 1st, we will have played enough different styles of teams that we'll be able to do a pretty good self-assessment and see where we are, see what we need to do, uh, measure our strengths and weaknesses, and keep working on our strengths and improve our weaknesses, and hopefully, again, use the month of January and February to become a pretty good tournament team and hopefully be ready to make a run in the state tournament. You know, and you, I want to go back. You, you talk about depth and want to develop, and, and sometimes it, it, coaches want to do that they don't have the personnel to do that or they don't have what it takes to get it done you guys to develop depth and again with with guys that get playing time have to be committed to to guys that don't get the playing time but a lot of times it's it's just time on the floor will get a little bit more experience for guys and i I know that's what you're trying to build well one of the things that happens in high school basketball is uh you're going to get games where you feel like 
if your first group really plays at a high level, we can determine the outcome pretty quickly uh, and then just eventually work kids in in the roles and get them some minutes because, you know, we've had uh, the best example so far has been the Columbus East game. You know, in the East game, we got in the second half, and it was such a uh, – tightly contested game uh, we didn't have the liberty to to substitute so we needed our five best on the floor for the majority of that game uh, we've got a couple of those coming up too that we feel like that's probably going to be the same way so what we got to do is try to take advantage of some of the other situations where it can work kids in and out and uh, at, at some point in time uh, whether it be an injury whether it be foul trouble whatever the case is you just got to have that extra guy or two and for us it's not just having an extra guy or two it's having an extra guy at the guard position it's having an extra guy in the post position that we can count on to come in mm -hmm. and give us some minutes and it's taken us a while a little longer than we thought but through five games now we feel like as i said earlier we got seven guys and we can take our first two guys uh off the bench, change one of them, and then Austin Kramer, the other, and for a short period of time, we can get them in the game and not see much drop off in, in our level. We still have an outstanding starting five, right. all of which have unique skill sets, uh, but we now have, at least at this point in time, been able to work those kids in and not see much of a drop off. Now, we can't do it for a long period of time yet, right. but uh, usually with foul trouble or injuries, you don't need to do it right. for a long period of time, Tim, so I'm pleased with that. You, you look at a 24 and three season and, and for as a coaching staff you know what you want to build on and you know what you need for the upcoming season as as players on the floor and kind of getting into their head a little bit coach what do you what do you tell them about going into the next season after you've had success well i think what you do is you try to do enough self-evaluation to say you know how do we become a better individual uh, and then how do we put that together uh, to become a better team. Our, our emphasis has always been in the offseason to try to improve ourselves offensively. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of the defensive part once we start the season. And if you just look down the line at the kids that are playing a lot of minutes for us, each and every one of them has developed something in addition to what they had a year ago. Uh, and that's one of the, the keys for us up to this point in time, why we've been a very, very good basketball team. And uh, it changes your team a little bit. Uh, I, I'll give you a perfect example, Tim, and, you know, with these guys sitting here, uh, uh, Tyler is the perfect example that a year ago drew everybody's best defensive player and had a phenomenal season, uh, but we really centered offensively because our other kids weren't developed to the point uh, that that he, he was our kid that was going to get us a key basket. Now, he right. still doesn't do that, right. but now what's happened is after five games, people got to be looking at us and saying, well, you know, if we put our best defender on Tyler, man, we're going to have trouble guarding those other guys right. too. And we we feel like we've really developed offensively to the point people just have an extremely difficult time matching up. We can find we can find a matchup somewhere in our lineup to our advantage. Um, and so, you know, if, if guys will be patient, another two or three games down the line, we're going to see somebody else draw the best defender, mm -hmm. and then that opens it up for right. one of our other players. And uh, because of our skill set, because our kids did put a lot of time in and improve offensively, it now becomes very difficult for other teams to, to uh, defend us. I, I, I still am puzzled a little bit. Uh, we didn't shoot the three very well first couple games of the season. I thought, boy, we're going to see a lot of zones mm -hmm. until we start knocking threes down. Now the last, uh, I think we've hit 25 out of our last 50 threes, mm -hmm. and that will solve yeah. uh, that problem a little bit. But it's, it's just kind of been interesting to see how not only how our kids have developed, uh, particularly on offense, but how other people are viewing us mm -hmm. and trying to defend us. And, uh, you know, we go to New Washington last night. Uh, I, I found it fascinating that they man to man us. Mm -hmm. I mean, to think that they thought they could match up with us, and yet these kids will tell you, we told them during the week of practice in our preparation, they're probably going to man you. And they manned us last year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I guess we got to convince enough people that you're not going to be able to guard us at all five positions until 
uh, we, we pound on them enough and they figure it out. So we're going to see a lot of different things coming up here. We still haven't seen the gimmick defenses, which I right. believe we'll see, the triangle and twos, maybe the box and ones and right. those things. But uh, these guys have just done a fantastic job uh, of developing their skill set so that we could become the offensive basketball team. Put that together with how solid we've been defensively and mm -hmm. we've become a pretty good basketball team. You get a guy like Tyler that's an outstanding shooter, a uh, thousand point scorer. Sometimes teams, guys on the floor, the other four will rely on him to, to make a basket when you need it. How do these guys approach it? Well, a year ago, uh, we did that a lot. And uh, now that we have a different skill set, you know, with the guy sitting here, for mm -hmm. example, Hunter can take his man off the dribble just about any time he wants. And that, that takes some of the pressure off of TK. Uh, it, um, Foster and uh, Matthew started knocking down threes. That's taken some of the pressure off. So now we're, we're a much better offensive team in terms of balance. Uh, you know, we got four guys right at double figures. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, not to take anything away from what anybody else is trying to do to us, but just because we've been able to develop different facets of the game now. You know, all of our guards, all three of our guards, we can shoot it, we can drive it, we can get to the free throw line, we can sure. knock down free throws. All of our inside guys can step out and shoot the three. They can take it inside. Uh, these kids have worked extremely hard at just becoming uh, good, solid, all-around basketball players. And uh, because of that, um, if we play, we play at a high level, Tim, we're an awfully, awfully good basketball team, right? Coach, I want to I want to kind of go back and reflect a little bit. Uh, when you got to the regional last year, dropped a decision to Austin. Of course, you had a, an injury issue last year in the in the regional. You walked out, and I, and I know it was a game you felt like you needed to win. You should have won, but you didn't. What do you, what do you tell the kids when you leave? Well, I think the toughest thing uh, when it happened last year was with, uh, first of all, two seniors, sure. Coleman and and Caleb Bentley that uh, uh, that was going to be it for them. They didn't have the opportunity to, to come back and make up for it. And I think if you talked about the kids that were in that locker room after that happened, they all kind of looked around at each other and said, you know, we don't like this feeling at right. all. It, it's as far short of what we anticipated mm -hmm. and what we felt like we could accomplish. But because of circumstances, it, it, it happens. And, you know, Tim, in, in athletics, there's never any guarantee. You can work extremely hard. You can do all the right things, and for whatever reasons, sometimes it'll work out, sometimes it doesn't. So you have to be – part of being an athlete, part of being a coach is being able to accept uh, when things don't turn out the way you want them. But uh, our challenge to these guys, and I think collectively as we looked at coaches and players together, was we're going to do everything we can not to let this happen again. And. Uh, you know, th then comes the commitment in the weight room and the commitment in the open gyms and AAU seasons and all the things that these kids have done. Uh, and it was just, you know, let, let's do everything we can mm -hmm. from now until November of next year to make sure that we're far better prepared, we're far better off. And when you put all those things together, hopefully that will en enhance our chances of advancing. And they've done all that. Right. They've done all that. Now we just – what we have to do is week by week continue to try to improve. And, you know, I think one of the things this group impresses me most with is – and I said to them last night, we got to forget – with, with this particular group of kids that we have, we got to forget the name that's on the jersey of the other team. Mm -hmm. We want to play at that high level no matter who we're right. playing. That's our goal. Uh, so if, if that's Madison or if that's New Washington or that's Jeffersonville, mm -hmm. Columbus East, whatever that name on that jersey is, we, we need to forget that and go out and play basketball at a high level like we can play. And we, we've done a pretty good job of that. It's not been perfect, mm -hmm. but uh, we're getting awfully close to putting some really, really – Good, consistent basketball together. You, you, uh, you, and I have talked a multitude of times over the course of the last hundred years. When you, back in the day, put together a scouting report, and now you have this team and put together a scouting report, has it changed much on how you prepare for the other team? Well, it does in the sense that we now have a team. For example, this year that we can really go out and put good pressure on. The, the team we had a year ago, because of who we had in, we still have, and, and again, no doubt, yeah. we, we had to be a little more selective about that. This group, we can go from the jump ball all the way through and just get after you, and we can do it in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. we, 
we, we got in our arsenal, you know, full court, three quarter court, half court. Uh, we do little traps out of our own zone. Uh, these guys are as versatile a basketball team. So from year to year, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a foundation that we try to build. But when you have the skill set, uh, and, and the versatility that these guys have developed, we can do so many more things, right. not only on the defensive end, but then on the offensive end too. We're pushing the ball as hard and as fast as probably any team I've coached. Mm -hmm. And these guys are really comfortable doing that. You know, we're, we're, we're putting up a ton of possessions and we're still, Tim, averaging seven, eight turnovers a game. You know, mm -hmm. everybody says, well, the more possessions you have, the more turnovers you're going to have. These guys don't. Right. They don't. They, they understand the importance. We, we seem to get a pretty good shot just mm -hmm. about every time down. And when you can do that, it, once again, you enhance your chances of not only being successful day in, day out, but really beating the teams, the good teams that we intentionally put on our schedule right. to try to get us ready for the tournament. So they've just done a fantastic job of, of putting that all together. But for us, each team's a little different. Sure. And next year's team, mm -hmm. as we lose these three seniors, right. be a little different again mm -hmm. because of who's going to blend in and who's going to play the roles. So. We might not be, in the beginning, nearly as versatile as these guys were, but eventually we'd like to get back to that because these guys really enjoy getting up and down the floor. I enjoy coaching that way because I love watching these guys play mm -hmm. and play unselfishly. You've watched it, too. Yeah. When these guys play at a high level, it's a lot of fun to watch. And that's one of the reasons we got a ton of people coming in to watch these kids play. I don't know how many people we had at New Washington last night, but we had our whole side and part of the other side. Yeah. And uh, our community is getting behind them also. So uh, we just got to continue that. And from year to year, it changes based yeah. on these guys' skill set more than anything else. But uh, so far, they've done everything I've asked them to do. So. Do, they, do they do a lot of coaching themselves on the floor? Uh, it, it's amazing. It's probably more of that going on than I really know. <laughs> but we have a we have a group of kids with a very what I call a very high basketball intelligence mm -hmm. level, and uh, they can call. I've given them more freedom mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of cases than I would give other teams, just simply because of that. And they'll do things. Uh, you know, I'll say to Tyler once in a while, or Foster, or Hunter, or whoever. Uh, you know, you can run. Uh, you can run a, our pass trap or a corner trap or whatever. You guys call it, you figure out a way to do what you do. And if I see something, uh, sometimes I'll be on the sideline and, and watching alignments. And, you know, for a team that's going to take the ball to the corner on us, we're going to try to trap that a lot. Mm -hmm. These guys don't necessarily see that, but they'll see, hey, coach, the, the perimeter guys, uh, we can tell they don't like pressure at all. Mm -hmm. So then we'll run a different trap right. for those guys. And these guys have been fantastic about that also. So they have a lot more freedom mm -hmm. than some teams I've given to. And it, it's funny to listen to some of the old guys come back, coach, you're not coaching the way you used to coach. And I said, well, one of the things is these guys are a lot better than you guys were. <laughs> so, uh, But they, they have a lot of freedom, and the reason is because they're basketball intelligence level is extremely high and they're pretty good at it. I'm going to talk with the seniors here in just a minute. Coach, I know you want to mention uh, your seniors here. You have three of them, three outstanding seniors with us today. Well, it, we'll go, kind of go down the line and as I look down on the far end with Shane Mills, uh, Shane comes to us this year for first year in our program from uh, from Trimble County and you know, all I can say to Shane is what, what an adjustment this kid has had to make mm -hmm. going from a kid who for the first three years of his high school career been in pretty much a leading scorer and mm -hmm. uh, uh, take a lot of shots and now he's playing a role for us that that is completely different than that and he's done an absolutely fantastic job of fitting in personality wise with these kids uh, uh, being that first post guy off the bench and uh, that doesn't mean that he's not going to be a starter at some mm -hmm. point in time down the line but he has really done a great job of accepting his role uh, we see every game more and more that there's a comfort level developed with, with his uh, with his teammates, um, and as long as he continues doing that, uh, he's going to be an absolutely vital part of hopefully what will be an enjoyable season for us. So you know, I congratulate Shane. I'm really on him a lot of times, and I'll get on him about leaving some of that stuff over in Kentucky, and he's in <laughs> Indiana now. But I think he takes it the right way, and he's been a fantastic kid. And then you got knucklehead uh, Kramer here in the middle, but I'm going to tell you what. I said on uh, on Lovell's show last night when I called in, um, if people don't appreciate what this kid has done in his high school career, I really feel sorry for him. And I say that 
because he has been an absolute model of consistency, Tim. When you look at Tyler's statistics, particularly over his sophomore, junior, and senior year, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I went back, and I, I think I'm pretty close, if not exact, but I think uh, Tyler's played now in sophomore, junior, and senior year, not counting his freshman year, but in sophomore, junior, and this year, he's played in 55 I think are 56 varsity games and has been in double figures in 50 or 51 of those. Uh, that's absolutely phenomenal. You just don't see that mm -hmm. now from high school kids and it just speaks to the time and effort that he's put in. Uh, I still think we're going to get some college out there interested in him and they're going to get an absolute diamond in the rough because this kid is a winner, mm -hmm. he can play, and he can score. And I know there's colleges out there looking for that. But for us, he's been an absolute model of consistency offensively. And now he's at least not really to the level I'd like yet. Right. But he's taken a lot more pride, not only in his rebounding, but defensive play. Mm -hmm. And that's added uh, to what he gives our basketball team. And then you've got this guy sitting next to me who – you know, most golfers, they can't play basketball worth a diddly. But I say that jokingly with Hunter because when he came to us a couple of years ago, it was, um, and I think he'd tell you, I think he'd tell you he'd kind of lost his passion mm -hmm. for the game a little bit. And after being with us a short time, he got re-energized. And there's no more kid that we have anywhere in our program that is more valuable for what he does for us. And a perfect example of that last night, Tim, uh, we're halfway through the fourth quarter. It's a 40 or a 45 point game. This kid gets on the floor for a loose ball at the 10 second line, comes up with a possession, gets the ball to one of his teammates. We end up with a conversion down on the other end. Uh, not many kids get on the floor when you got a 40 point lead. And for him, it was just another play. Mm -hmm. But I've seen a passion in him that uh, has really added to our basketball team. And he's probably our best defender. Uh, day in, day out, uh, and again, he, he, he's a kid doesn't have to score. If right. he does score, it's great. Last year he had a game, I think, 29 or 31, and then another night's with four or six, whatever has to be done right. for us to win. And so when I look at these three kids, they all represent what's best right now about our basketball program at Southwestern because mm -hmm. they're kids that have accepted what they do. They understand what they do best. Uh, and they've taken that to a different level. And they've had a very positive effect, not only on themselves and each other, but on all their teammates. Mm -hmm. And when you get that from seniors, I have said for years, and I believe this wholeheartedly, you are what your seniors are. Mm -hmm. If you have a group of seniors that are winners, that are coachable, that are just gut gritten people, you're going to win. You're mm -hmm. going to win at a high level. And that's what we have right, right now. This, is, this has been overall the most solid group of seniors that we've had for quite some time mm -hmm. out there. And I'm extremely proud of them. Uh, and they're the reason. They're right. the big reason why we're successful like we are. All right. Hunter, you're up first. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. And you? Good. Um, we'll get into the golf part of this in just a minute because most people or some people may not know what your, your golfing um, ability is. So we're going to let them know here in just a second. Talk about basketball. Talk about bas basketball season. Um, last season, this season, what's the difference between last year and this year with this group? Uh, last year, like Coach said, the depth that we had last year, we only, I mean, we really had five, six people that could play, and the, the first five had to play a lot, mm -hmm. and we kind of got worn down towards the end of the year. Sure. Um, we had to deal with some injuries in the regional. Mm -hmm. um, but this year it's a lot different. We have people that can come in for me or Tyler or Foster or Matthew or Zach, and they can come in and contribute. I think last night Tyler's little brother had six, seven, eight assists, mm -hmm. and Shane had a couple buckets that were huge. Um, so they can just come in and they can provide for us. So we don't have to – we can get those breaks and sure. we can um, – get re-energized when we go back in and we just we don't drop off the level of play doesn't drop off 32 minutes of basketball night in and night out i don't care what age you are it's got to wear on you a little bit it does wear on you a little bit and i like to take pride in the shape i am so i i, I love playing 32 minutes every mm -hmm. night because it's fun mm -hmm. i mean it's my senior year so sure. i, I want to be doing something but uh getting those breaks every once in a while is it helps what's the outlook for you for this team for the rest of the season um i think we're gonna I mean, I think we're capable of winning every single game that we play. Um, so that means, obviously, a state championship. Sure. So that's my main goal. Mm -hmm. I think our team is more than capable of winning the state championship. 
Um, but we got to take it game by game. Every game that we play. So next Friday is the most important game that sure. we have. And then Saturday after that. So I think the mindset that we have to have is every game is most important. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, we take care of it game by game. And then hopefully we can go to the state. So. Let's talk about golf a little bit. For those that may not know, you signed uh, to play golf somewhere. Talk about it just a little bit. It's really exciting. Oh, sure. Um, I've been playing golf since I was in third grade so to be able and I've always dreamed of playing division one I've watched Purdue basketball or Duke basketball and it's like that's the dream to go play division one basketball somewhere or division one anywhere really right. and now that I found my passion in golf and I'm getting ready to go play division one golf somewhere is really exciting I know it's in Fort Wayne so yep. it's gonna be pretty cold up there and I'm not ready for that <laughs> yet but um, I'm really excited about it it's I mean it's going to be really fun. Well, it's, it's a great opportunity, and, and we wish you the best, and thanks for being here this morning. Thank you. All right. Tyler, slide over. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, your basketball career and, and, and why you've had the success that you've had. Uh, I've had the success that I've had because of my teammates, my coaches. Uh, yeah, maybe my teammates in the past three years mm -hmm. uh, with Hunter, his brother Foster, then Matthew, mm -hmm. Shane this year, yeah. and then Christian Coleman back when I played my uh, freshman and sophomore year. You, you've <laughs> seen some 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 lean times and and hard work equals better play, and everybody's got to be on the same page. And obviously, through the course of your years in basketball, through the the senior year. It's gotten a lot better. Yeah, it has gotten a lot better since my freshman and sophomore year, especially. Mm -hmm. Last year was pretty good, but we lost in the regional, so we don't want that to happen again this year. You're a pretty good shooter. How come? Uh, I practice a lot because uh, my dad, I think. <laughs> <laughs> don't have a choice? No, yeah. <laughs> Even if you didn't want to, you still have to be practicing. Oh, yeah. Uh, talk about your teammates a little bit and, and what they mean to you as, as a shooter. You're one of the, the, the best pure shooters I've seen in the area for a long time. They look to you for a lot for scoring, but you got to feed off of them as well. Yeah, yeah I love my teammates. Uh, they're the guys that keep me going and give me open shots and give me the ball at the right time. And I would be able to make those shots without them guys helping me out. What about for you after high school what are you what are you going to play somewhere hopefully yeah that's the plan to yeah. play somewhere i don't yeah. know where yet but yeah hopefully it comes soon enough all right thanks for being here this morning Thank you. all right shane good morning to you good morning uh you're the new kid on the block so to speak what's it been like for you coming over here and playing basketball at southwestern uh well i moved from a point guard to more of a post position so mm -hmm. been working hard on that and then I fit in with all my teammates pretty good, so that's <laughs> has it good. been has it been a big adjustment? Um, no, not really. Yeah. It's fun, so yeah. you don't even notice it. Working hard? Yeah. Working too hard? No. 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 What's the biggest challenge? Um, probably just like working in the post, mm -hmm. like never playing it before in my life. It's right. just difficult learning the new like how to play post and then that's uh, anytime you learn a new position it's got to be a little bit more of a challenge and difficult what do you think about this team for the rest of the season like hunter said i think we can win them all yeah it, and you get a game like last night where where you 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 get a big lead and and it's easy when you get a, a big lead to to maybe not focus as well did this team focus last night as well with a big lead yeah i think we stay focused through all the minutes of the game. What about you for after high school? Have a plan yet? Um, I plan on majoring in mechanical engineering and hopefully going somewhere to play basketball in college. Best of luck to you. Thanks. Morning, Coach. I asked the, the kids uh, about you know future for the rest of the season. Uh, you, I mean, I, I think it's pretty pretty acceptable that the goal is and the bar is set pretty high. Yeah, and and, and I think that's what uh, that's what I enjoy about these kids because they are highly motivated. You know, and a, and a lot of things have to go right. Yeah, obviously. Uh, for you to be in that position to ever even uh, compete for a state championship. But, you know, one of the things I've tried to sell them from on, on the begin very beginning of the season uh, that I tried to sell them on is that we have the pieces. Mm -hmm. We really do. We have the ball handlers. We have the shooters. Uh, we can defend. We're quickness. We lack a little bit of size. But with Shane in and uh, he and Matthew both being 6'4", uh, we don't have to be great big to play at a, a high level. People have already seen that from us. Now for us, it's a matter of 
the rest of the season trying to develop a standard of consistency regardless of who we're playing. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys, uh, they, they honestly, uh, they're not pulling any, any baloney with people. that They honestly think they can win every game yeah. that's left on their schedule. So uh, if we don't do that, we'll walk away disappointed, but we'll go back to work. And then, once again, the ultimate is get ourselves ready so that when late February, early March come and the tournament starts, that we're able to, to make a tournament run. And, uh, and we went through that once here in 97, 98, right. and it was a lot of fun. Uh, these guys have every bit of good a skill set as that group and, and probably even a little more or better defensively maybe not quite as big so we know if they could, if that group could get it done this group can surely get it done these guys have a, a lot of success and and having that much success then how do they handle the failure uh well i think they're a lot like uh people who don't have much failure. Sure. You don't like it very well. Exactly. And right. You don't like that feeling, yeah. so you're going to make sure it doesn't happen very often. Right. Uh, you still have to be realistic. Uh, they've been great about when things don't go the way they need to, to be able to sit down, analyze mm -hmm. why if we need to make a change, we need to do something a little different, we can do that. Uh, most of the time, any failure that comes in is because of crappy coaching, <laughs> not because of the plan, but right. it's the other part of it. So but we'll try to take care of that part of it. But these guys, uh, they've just been phenomenal. Um, uh, of all the years I've coached, um, and I've been fortunate in my coaching career, Tim. I think you and I have talked about this before. I've coached the number one team in the state. I've had probably 10, 12 teams rated in the top 10 at one time or another. Uh, really had some fantastic young men to play basketball for me and been fortunate but I don't think I've ever been around a group of kids that I feel closer with mm -hmm. that I feel are more united mm -hmm. in what they have uh, uh, as a goal to accomplish as a group than this group and uh, the other thing that people forget they are absolute fantastic in the community our little guys that come to the games love them to death uh, I found out not long ago about these some of these guys going to a birthday party for a couple of the little guys and it was just like it made their year for basketball players to show up those are the kinds of things that these kids do and then the other thing that they do uh, we we have very few problems on the varsity level uh with greats they're mm -hmm. great student athletes now we do have a little struggle with one or two of our other knuckleheads that are on the jv team <laughs> but we're trying to get that squared away a little bit but these guys are all very good students mm -hmm. great community members that makes them a pleasure. They're easy to root for right. just because of the kind of people they are. Right. And it's, it's, it's a pleasure for me just to have the opportunity to coach them. Southwestern Rebels, uh, again, 5-0 and on the season. Next up, a double weekend next weekend at Jacksonville on Friday, hosting Jeffersonville on Saturday. Coach Jerry Baumholt, we appreciate you coming in this morning. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Tim. All right, that's Coach Jerry Baumholt. Also want to say thanks to our seniors for coming in today, Hunter Mefford, Tyler Kramer, and Shane Mills. We'll do it again next week. It is Coach's Corner live from McDonald's. Thanks to Jordan Bear in studio. We'll see you next week here on Works 96.7. Sponsored in part by McDonald's, 744 Clifty Drive, Madison, Indiana. Chandler Chevrolet, 600 Clifty Drive, Madison, Indiana. Madison Power Equipment, 5427 North State Road 7, Madison, Indiana.